Welcome to the video on user management for the child protection and GBV modules of Progress V4. The objectives of this video are for you to understand the security access for UNHCR and partner staff when using the child protection and GBV modules of V4, to apply the user profiles for the child protection and GBV modules appropriately for users in your context, and to understand the user management process, including initial profile setup and AMP. Please note that this video is intended to be watched in combination with the user profile video in this series. If you have not yet watched the user profile video, please go back and watch that first before watching this video, as we will reference things covered in that initial video. As you will remember, in the child protection and GBV modules of v Progress V4, the user profiles are slightly different than those in the other modules found in Progress. There are six user profiles. There is the protection case reader, which allows for minimal access just to be able to see whether a case exists. There is a child protection and GBV case reader, which would allow for someone to have parts of a case shared with them and be able to read those parts for to complete their work. There is a caseworker profile, which would allow for someone to create and uh, work on a case as part of case management. There is a case manager profile, which would allow someone to create cases as well as supervise those individuals providing case management services as a caseworker. There is a monitor role, which allows for the quality assurance of the data, um, but does not allow access to personal information within the case file. And finally, there's the super user, which is an admin position, which allows for an individual to transfer case files from one staff member who has left uh, without transferring their case files to a new staff member. Security access in Progress V4 has been designed on a few basic concepts. The first is that individuals are granted user profiles, which will determine what level of access they will have to specific modules and entities, as well as which modules and entities they are able to access. In addition to the user profile's definition of what modules and entities and data fields the individual will be able to access, they are also limited to accessing information within a business unit, which would be the context in with which they are working. It's possible, depending upon the profile and the role of the individual in the organization and their functions, that they might need more than one profile within their business unit to be able to complete their work. And then based upon the privileges granted, the individual will only be able to access that information that they are granted access to and perform specific activities that they are granted access. Thus, someone with a specific profile might be able to see information, but would not be able to change it. Whereas someone with a different profile would be able to make modifications as necessary or be able to do specific types of reporting. I just mentioned the concept of business unit. Business unit is how information in Progress V4 is organized. It is, business units are defined upon the implementation of Progress V4 within an operation or a context. And so in a country or an operation, there might be one business unit for the whole operation or in those operations where there are large numbers of files um, and records, it's possible that you would have multiple business units for the different locations or the different types types of populations. Again, this is determined during deployment, but if there are multiple business units in an operation, if it was necessary for someone to be able to access files in the various business units, they would need to be granted a profile in each of those business units. If you are working in only one location and you are granted access to that BU, then you would only be able to see the information within your location um, and defined by your user profile. As mentioned in the last video around user profiles, another concept that is important to understand for the application of user management in GBV and child protection modules is the concept of positions. In terms of positions, it is a hierarchy function in Progress V4 that allows for us to take into consideration supervision of caseworkers for the support that a 
a case supervisor would provide to case workers and allow for them to fulfill the functions of supervision in case management. This means that it's important when we are applying user profiles and, and user management that we not only define the user profile that someone would be assigned, but you would also need to identify the location in which that individual would be working um, so that you could then create the hierarchy um, that would allow for the supervision as necessary when completing the user management. So for example, in the last video, we discussed what the different positions or user profiles can look like in terms of our structure. So if you have a business unit within it, you can have the UNHCR staff who have a case manager who would be responsible for the supervision of two case workers. And you could have a UNHCR only monitor who would be able to see the case UNHCR case files, but not the, the identifiable information, only that information which would be used for quality assurance testing. And then individuals perhaps granted access as a case reader, meaning that they don't have access to files automatically, but if there was the need for a case file or a part of a case file to be shared with them so that they could complete their work, such as perhaps uh, a resettlement officer trying to finalize the resettlement of an individual, they could then have the caseworker responsible for the GBV case management share a piece of that case with them so that they could be able to get the necessary information to complete the paperwork for their processes as well. Now, this was what we had shown in the user profiles in terms of how the different responsibilities and positions work together. But now we're going to look at how, what something like this would look like in terms of our user management. So, when we are trying to create the user management for our GBV or child protection staff, one of the first steps is going to be to map the individuals by their role in case management and location. This is kind of the final product where we already, we see people defined not by their positions and their functions, but actually by the user profiles. To get to this point, you first need to actually map out the individuals. And then you will be able to go through and identify then those people who are providing linked services to GBV or child protection. So perhaps not direct GBV or child protection staff, but those who are serving a specific function that might result in them needing to be able to access cases on an ad hoc case by case basis. We would identify who those individuals are, and that can be also identified through focal points who have been identified within the SOPs for the other modules. And then finally, you would need to go about identifying individuals responsible for GBV and child protection reporting. So those who are responsible for generating the statistics, then those people would need to as well be added into the organogram that you have used to map out the individuals that would have engagement with GBV or child protection cases. Once you've done that, so we'll walk through this now, I'll give you an example. So for step one, what we should do, and I'm going to use a GBV example here, um, but this is, you would do exactly the same thing for child protection as well. I'm pretending I'm in an operation um, and I'm going to map out. And now we're going to walk through those steps step by step to help you understand what it looks like to set out the user management for the GBV or child protection modules. So in this example, I'm going to pretend to be the GBV focal point for UNHCR's Operation X. And I'll be working in combination with my colleagues um, and registration focal points responsible for the deployment of V4 to help them identify the individuals that would then need to be granted access to the GBV or child protection modules. So as we said, in the first step, I'm going to be mapping out those individuals who are working directly on GBV case management. Now, this can look very different in different operations due to the fact that our engagement with case management might be different in some locations where we provide direct service provision and in some locations where we actually are mainly just providing 
uh, referrals to specialized partners who are providing the GBV case management, or this is the same for child protection. But in this location, we have three offices. We have a subnational office A and a subnational office B, and then a national office. In subnational office A, I have a GBV officer who supervises an assistant office GBV officer. The assistant officer is really the the case supervisor, and they both sometimes work on the most complicated cases, but at the same time also supervise two associate officers who are responsible for the day-to-day -day GBV case management. Now that can be providing direct services or, and or referring them to partners. Those are our direct GBV service providers in subnational office A. In subnational office B, there's a GBV officer who is the supervisor and provides case management uh, supervision to two associate officers as well. So there are three direct service providers in subnational office B. And then finally, at the national offices, there is one GBV officer who periodically gets involved in GBV cases um, as they, if they come to the national office, as well as sometimes supporting any more complex cases from the subnational offices or transfer cases. So that is the first step. We have mapped out the GBV officers or those providing direct service provision to GBV survivors. And again, you would do exactly the same thing, but with regards to child protection, if you were then mapping out the child protection users. Now that we've mapped them out and based upon, and we see what they are doing in terms of their roles, we would then look to see, okay, based upon their function, now what, what user profile would be assigned to them? And so as we said, the GBV officer in subnational office A is really not involved in the day-to-day -day case management supervision. So she would either, or he would either be a case manager to allow for them to provide for the uh, supervision for the assistant officer, or it's possible that they might be a monitor. So providing more of the, the reporting needs for this position. Now, it's much more clear what the assistant officer and the associate officer's roles would be based upon their function, which would be the assistant officer might get involved in cases and their own cases, so they would need to be able to create cases, but they also need to be able to do any necessary supervision of the two associate officers. So the assistant officer would be a case manager, and they would then be supervising the associate officers who would be individual caseworkers able to create and see all of their cases um, and be able to share and do whatever would be necessary for their caseworker. And subnational office B, it's a similar setup as to the subnational office A, where we would have the GBV officer would be the case manager, allowing them to both create their own cases as well as to provide feedback and supervision to the associate officers who would be doing most of the casework and would then have their own caseworker profiles. In the national office, the GBV officer, again, depending upon what the relationship is to the subnational office level, as well as the engagement of individuals in the national office with direct service provision, they might be a case manager, um, which would allow them to then create their own cases um, or a case worker, um, just which would allow them to a, either create their own cases and have cases shared with them if that needed to happen on an ad hoc basis. This is step one. So now we've finished step one. And so then the next step would be for us to go back and to look at those individuals who are not direct GBV or child protection focal points, but who are providing services or doing work that would be related to and periodically need access to the GBV or the child protection module. And so in these locations, this would be in subnational office A, there's a protection officer and a senior protection officer as well as in subnational office B, a resettlement officer and as assistant protection officer. And then in the national office, there's a, a senior protection officer as well. For us to be able to understand what type of access these positions would need, we need to think through a little bit what is their engagement and what is their role and then what, what would be the best user profile to be assigned to them. Again, 
The user profile that is assigned to someone has nothing to do with the title of the individual. This is very different from than the other modules of V4. It actually has much more to do with the function of the person um, and the role of that person in terms of G GBV or child protection. So in some national office A, the protection officer that we have here is actually what, someone who's working at the protection desk. And so this would be someone who oftentimes is a first point of contact or a follow-up point of contact for individuals who are coming to follow up on their specific needs. So this individual would probably be really well suited to have the protection case reader profile. This would allow them to be able to see if an individual has a GBV or a child protection case. And that is really it. They will be able to see that the, a case exists and they will be able to see who is the owner of that case. So who is the caseworker who is responsible for that case? And this will then allow them to connect that individual to their caseworker or to co contact that caseworker to see if there's any communication that needs to go back and forth. So that is what we would propose that you give to the protection officer in this subnational office A. Now for the senior protection officer, this really would depend on what, again, the frequency with which they're engaging with cases or what their, their specific needs are around their, their role. Um, but in this location, we would anticipate because there are multiple levels of supervision within the GBV team, the SPO would really only be engaged in highly complex cases. So it would be shared with them on an ad hoc basis. So in this case, the SPO most likely would be either a GBV case reader or a case worker. Now, the difference between these two would be if the SPO just needs to have access to information that's shared with them, but does not need to be able to write in that file, then a GBV case reader would be a sufficient profile. But if it's possible that the SPO would ever get directly involved in the case, would take over, would need to be able to write recommendations or comments within the file, then they should have be granted as a caseworker profile so that that case could be shared with them and they would be able to then write in the file in addition to just being able to view. Now in subnational office B, you would see, as we said, the same with the GBV officers. We've already done those, but we have a resettlement officer here and an assistant protection officer. The assistant protection officer is similar uh, position to what we had in subnational office A. So they would also be granted a protection case reader that way they could see if a case exists and they would then be able to connect the individual to the, the caseworker, uh, the appropriate caseworker. The resettlement officer is a different case, but similar a little bit to the SPO, as in oftentimes what needs to happen for resettlement officers is they will need to have be granted access to specific parts of a GBV case at specific points within the resettlement process. Now, what the GBV case reader will allow is that that resettlement officer can request to the case worker that this is what they're doing with this individual and can request specific access. And then the case worker responsible for that case would be able to share that, that part of the file with the consent of the survivor so that that paperwork or that process would be able to be completed. It's important that when the SOPs are being developed for both the GBV or child protection, if this is child protection module you're working on, and the resettlement officers, that the SOPs clarify who is the specific person within the resettlement unit who would be considered the GBV or the child protection focal point. Now, to go to the national office, the senior protection officer, again, we need to specifically think about what is the role of this senior protection officer within the national office and really how do they historically engage with GBV cases. Now, so are they going to, maybe it's not frequent, but do they ever have to get involved in a case? And if so, then would that be a case worker or a case reader profile, again, depending upon whether they would actually need to be able to write in the case or if it would just be have something shared with them so they can see the information. 
And again, it would also depend upon the relationship between the SPO and the GBV officer. If the senior protection officer is supervising the GBV officer in the national office, then it's possible that individual would be a case manager so that they can then both get cases shared with them or create cases in very complex cases all and also at the same time be able to provide supervision to the GBV officer in the national office. So it's highly possible that the SPO in that position could be any of those three positions just based upon what their specific needs would be to be able to complete their role as senior protection officer in that national office. So for this specific national office. I've gone ahead based upon my imaginary world and what these these uh, individuals do. The GBV officer, we've granted them a caseworker. We've, we've decided that the, the, the caseworker profile is going to be the most appropriate for them because they're doing direct service provision. And then the senior protection officer would also be granted a caseworker profile because they do need to be able, while they're not frequently involved in cases directly, they would need to be able to be brought into specific, very complex cases. Thus, we would want them to be able to have the case file shared with them and at the same time be able to read or write or do whatever they would need to do in order to be able to, to perform their function um, as senior protection officer. So now we've done the first two steps of the user management uh, initial mapping. And the third step is going to now look not so much at those individuals who need to be engaged with the GBV case or the child protection case because of case management, but more those engaged for the, pro the purpose of monitoring and evaluation or quality assessment. Because the child protection and the GBV modules have, again, our specific security profile so that people don't have access to all cases in a business unit, but they have access on a case-by-case -case basis. It is important that then there is consideration around how you all will, will be able to generate the statistics necessary from your uh, case files for case management key performance indicators. And what this would require is for some basic quality assurance. And so in this situation, we have an IMO, an information management officer, based in the national office who really works closely with the GBV unit and helps them to produce their annual statistics and this sort of stuff. And so this IMO would be very well placed to be the monitor for this setup, meaning that they would be able to access all of the case files generated by the caseworkers or the case managers in these different uh, offices, but they aren't able to access the, per the personal data, meaning that any of the fields such as the name or the case history where we write things out, that's not accessible to a monitor. What's accessible to the monitor are the drop-down menus. And this would allow to make sure that there's, if there's any errors or problems with the, the data quality, that the that these individuals, the IMOs, would be able to identify those problems. They are not able to write. So they would have to then contact the caseworkers to have any errors or things corrected, but that they would then be able to work with the GBV officers or whoever's responsible to then generate the statistics for analysis to be done by the GBV team or in the situation where this is a child protection example for the child protection team. And finally, then there's a discussion around the super user. The super user is basically a system admin position. It was specifically created to allow for cases who are created or owned by a caseworker. If that caseworker was to leave the operation or the business unit, that the super user would be able to transfer that case from the departed caseworker to a new caseworker. This oftentimes would happen with in times of big transitions or when you have a specific individual who's left that lots and lots of cases. So what we tend to suggest with a super user, it's not a position that would always be designated. 
It's not someone who has not a lot of time. This is something that would be designated for a specific purpose at a specific time. Meaning if you had someone who did happen to leave thousands of cases or there was no one who was able to uh, have a case transferred to another individual while they were here, then once it's identified where those cases would be transferred, you would identify someone, perhaps it's the IMO, perhaps this, and they would be granted access for a few days or for however long it would take to make sure that all of those cases who no longer have an owner would then be transferred to a new owner. And then once that functionality is done or that process is done, then time period for that super user designation would then be done. It is really important to remember that the super user functionality is a system admin role and requires a lot of time to do admin work such as transferring cases. Thus, it should really be considered who would be best placed at the specific time that you need the, the transfer files. You would be best placed to identify who that system admin would be have the time to be able to do those transfers. This can be done at the time necessary through the AMP portal. So this is what this should look like after you have completed the three steps of the initial mapping. This is something you would usually do when you are doing the initial implementation of GBV or child protection modules within your operation, or if you've had a significant change in terms of uh, structure due to new location, um, you're restarting, you've had a significant turnover, or if you're in starting with a new partner, um, that you should then make sure you go through this process as well to make sure that it's it's the organogram is then completed as well for partners. So this is something that we have focused here on the UNHCR staff, but you would then, as I said, do this then for a separate one for the child protection module. And you would also then do a separate one for any of the partners that you would then be working with or implementing the GBV or the child protection modules with. Now, once you've done this, so now you have it mapped out what positions you need and the relationship between these positions. And so now we would go into the user management process. And what this does is depending upon the first, if it's the first time that you've set this up, or if this is something that has already been, positions have already been created, you will take two different processes. We're going to pretend here that we're actually, this is the initial implementation. So taking what we've just done, to make the example a little bit easier, I've taken just the sub-national office A uh, organogram here, so that we can then go ahead and show what this looks like to map out. So as I said, when we originally are creating the positions, you will work closely with your uh, requesting and approving officer in your operation to take what you've made here on the left and then create the request form for these profiles that would then be shared with private support for the original creation of profiles. Once this has been done initially, then we will talk through the AMP, which is a portal which will allow operations to do their own updating of user profiles. But the initial creation has to go through your requesting and approving officer, who will then submit this request to Prime Support. The requesting and approving officer will go to the link shown here, and it will generate them a table, which requires us to identify what is the user profile we're looking for, to identify the business unit. Then if it's a CP position, you would put that here or the GBV position here, the user type. So is it UNHCR or a partner? Um, and then the location. So again, what I've done here is mapped out in the table what we have here on the left. So the first one is we have a case manager position. So we need to create a case manager position and BUX, that was the name in case you didn't see it in the last thing. And that's a case manager, it's a UNHCR staff and it's in sub national office A. Same thing again for the next one, we need to create a case GBV case manager, same thing. We need two case workers. 
And then we would need to create the protection case reader. I ended up making this a GBV case reader. So we have these here. Now, the reason why I've shown this here, this isn't the actual template, it's an abbreviated version. I'll show you the real template in a moment. But it's important to know that if you were to take the business unit, the position, the user type, and the location, these four pieces of information together create what we call the position. So I can know which individual and position I'm referring to by putting these together. So BUX, case manager, UNHCR, and from the sub national office A. This is what we consider the position. And this becomes important when we get to the real table, which is go I will show you now. And this will be the form that the requesting and approving officer will use. It would be exactly what I just showed you, except for these, we would put them here. So you, this, this is the options that we talked about. We'd create the business unit, the position, if it's a child protection or a GBV, the user type, the office, or the location. And then this is automatically, that position I told you about in the last slide, that is what is automatically generated here. And then, very important for child protection and GBV, finally, it's important that we then identify the parent position. And what this does is this is our positions that we talk about around the ability for supervisors to be able to see the files of those people that they're supervising. That also needs to be indicated for any of the positions that require supervision. So that wouldn't be for like a monitor or a case reader, but it would be for a case worker or a case manager potentially. So what this could look like, and I've made it look a little different in terms of coloring, but to show you with our last slide that we showed you, what this should look like is, I've created the GBV case manager, filled in this information, and as you see, the position name is automatically filled in. So the position is the BUX, case manager, GBV case manager, UNHCR for sub-national office A. Now, we've said that this case manager is going to supervise these two individuals, so why I've highlighted them in yellow is for you to indicate that not only do we need to input the information as we've put here, but in addition to that, we need to indicate the parent. So who is going to be the supervisor of this case manager? And that is going to be for this case manager, it will be this case manager. So I need to take this position name, and I would put this here to know that this is the individual who would be supervising this case manager. And now I need to do the same for these two caseworkers. So these two caseworkers are going to report to this case manager. So I'm going to go and I'm going to take the position, this position of this case manager, and I'm going to place this here and here for these two caseworkers so that now we know that these two caseworkers are going to report to this case manager here, okay? And now I'm gonna go down and I'm gonna do this for now sub-national office B. You'll notice I didn't need to create the parent position for the case reader for these other locations because again, there's no supervision to the case reader positions because they are not responsible for the case management. For sub-national office B, I've got a case manager who supervises two case workers. So what I will do is I'm gonna again, again go and I'm gonna find my case manager. This looks BUX, GBV case manager, UNHCR, sub-national office B will be, I'm gonna copy that and that will be the supervisor or the parent position for these two caseworkers. And now I look back, I, all I have left is a case reader, case reader. I have two case workers, but again, if you remember, this is the senior protection officer who isn't going to be involved in most cases and probably doesn't have a supervisor who would be needing to follow up on their case management as well as the case officer or the GBV officer. So these two don't have any parent associated with them. And then there's the monitor. So this is what our request positions would look like for that initial organogram that we just mapped out together. So once this is done initially, 
Now you have these GBV case manager, GBV case worker positions created. This thing can be updated if you have new staffing or if you have a change in staff. Um, the specific profiles can be assigned, uh, access can be revoked. All of these things can be changed by the requesting and approving officers in country through a portal called AMP or also known as the access management portal. So what this allows is that once we've created these, these positions at the HQ level, then the requesting officer can go to an AMP portal and can then make the changes necessary in terms of who are these specific case managers, case workers, as we have turnover and changes in structure. And then the approving officer can then review and approve these changes as they are appropriate. So that is how we would tend to update the user profiles and user management after we have created the initial user, um, uh, we've submitted this initial uh, request for positions, um, user management request for positions um, to prime support at the initial deployment or implementation of, of these modules. Now, as I said, once we've done this for GBV and child protection, we would then need to also look at this and create these positions for partners. It's important for us to remember that partners do not have access to individuals unless a record is shared with them. And so when we are thinking through how we grant partners access, there are two different types that we can grant. There is full partner access, which does allow them to have the same access as a UNHCR staff, so they would be able to find the individual and then create a case for GBV or child protection from our registration module. Or there is partner access partial, which then requires that an individual would have, a, a partner staff would have to request from UNHCR access to a specific file so that they can then go in and create a GBV case from that individual. So there, that requires that there is an individual on the UNHCR side who is responsible for granting access to requests from partner staff for each of the case files that they would need to access. Once they've been granted this access, then they can go ahead and they can create the CP and GBV cases. They can update any basic information that's necessary um, based upon their, their rights, and they can then go ahead and make referrals. It's, it's important that access has to be set up for each partner organization within Prime Support. So that whole process, we just did that template, that would need to then be filled out for each of the partners and you would indicate that in terms of the office team partner. Here we have sub-national office A. Here we would also, if it was a partner position, we would then indicate, this wouldn't be UNHCR, this would be partner, and then we would indicate the specific partner and location. So that we would have, and that would be a part of their, their position name, and we could then identify that. So it's just very important when you're thinking through the implementation of the child protection or GBV module with a partner that the access is slightly different and we need to grant that access based upon their needs in terms of how they're engaging with um, our module as well as our resources to be able to who will be responsible for the granting of access, what that process will look like, and then that needs to be really clearly communicated and negotiated with partners as we implement the user management and user profiles. So in summary, the key messages of this video are that cases should be owned by caseworkers and shared with others only on a need to know principle, not based upon a, the title uh, of an individual, but really upon their function in terms of what their specific engagement with a GBV or a child protection case would be. Using different combinations of user roles would allow for flexible options for different operations. As you can see, the way we assigned the user profiles in this video were very much based upon the specific needs of the different um, staff in the different offices. And it really, really depends upon kind of how the structure is in each of the specific sites where we are assigning uh, user profiles.
It's important to think through this to make sure that we give people the access that they need to do their jobs, but no more information than that. And then finally, it's very, very important if we are doing an implementation of V4 with a partner, that it is as a part of our partner engagement before we even start having them use the system, that we need to be really clear and open to negotiation, not only in terms of the types of profiles and the access that we are granting partners, but also how what types of user profiles and access we are granting ourselves so that there is a lot of room for negotiation in the PPA so that we don't have more access to partners case files than we need. Um, so there has to be an open negotiation around the usage of profiles such as super user, the usage of profiles as a, a monitor versus a partner only monitor and a UNHCR only monitor. All of these need to be discussions that we have and agreements that we come to with partners before we uh, assign and finalize our user management. I hope this video has been helpful and thank you very much.